talking about pick means and i know that there are lots of opposing thoughts on what exactly pick means are almost always from people who don't matter or people who exhibit the behaviors that we're going to be discussing today and the most unimportant of them all is men who try and defend pick means because they know they benefit from the kind of vitriol and mistruths that pick means spew out and then of course there's pick means themselves who feel targeted who feel like the term pick me targets them in the same way that ho uh, slut etc have targeted women in times gone by and continue to target women but this is of course untrue so in order to understand the mind and the function and the harm that pick means actually inflict in society we need to understand who they are and exactly what the term means now so pick me almost always refers to a woman who exists to be consumed by the male gaze they are so concerned with being chosen by men that they are willing to engage in the most self-destructive methods and behaviors to ensure that they are chosen, they are selected, or that they are actually noticed. And because of this, you see that pygmies tend to shine in places where they really shouldn't. So in places where popular misogynists like Shadaya, etc. are speaking, you tend to find pygmies nodding profusely to these conversations because it allows them to feel the satisfaction of being applauded by the audience that they're trying to target so whenever something some vitriol is being spewed out against women or when they have to set themselves apart even by agreeing to the most ridiculous terms you find pygmies there they do not care about the longevity of their decisions um, about their re realistic nature of whatever they believe in they only care about the parts where they are chosen. So the loss that they experience is a non-issue. What is important is that they get chosen. It only becomes a problem when they have experienced so much loss but have still failed to get chosen. And this is when you begin to see them cry out loud, um, shout, scream, speak neg negatively and hate on women who they feel have been chosen unfairly despite not making as much of a loss or sacrificing as much as they have. Now one of the things that pygmies do is engage in benevolent sexism. Benevolent sexism is a kind patriarchy that pretends to be well-intentioned but still aims to keep women in the position that disenfranchises them and considers them to be innately inferior. And so you find it in the terminology that they use to describe women. Um, things like, uh, you know, when a woman finds a good man who is respectful or a good leader, submission comes to them naturally. What these statements do is push forward the patriarchal idea that says submission is a natural disposition for women. And so as long as a man is acting in his full alpha male right, he's deserving or he'll be able to get women to fall back into their most natural rested instinct, which is submission or inferiority. This is what benevolent sexism aims to do, and they engage in quite a bit of that. And they're also so committed to making men feel like men. They are committed to creating these gender stereotypes by staying as stereotypically female as they can and whilst also insisting that men stay as stereotypically men, male as they can and benevolent sexism isn't the only thing that they entertain they also believe in flattening the effects and the history of patriarchy as an oppressive system so that it falls into an interpersonal one and most of the time you can see in the things that they support like rape culture slut shaming victim blaming etc because it, they believe that anybody who experiences the negative parts of patriarchy, which are almost all of it, was deserving of them. So if your husband decided to take you back to your household, divorce you ETC, because you did not listen to him when he told you you should never wear weaves, for example, then you deserve to experience the humiliation that comes with it because patriarchy is a fair system and you were unfair you were out of your role and you were not performing well for the male gaze so you deserve to be punished and women who are willing to make these sacrifices should be in those places that's exactly what they believe like i said they believe that the system of patriarchy can be saved 
and that it can be savage and that it's also a fair system and what they want is to stay within the bounds of their space without letting go of some of the things that feminism has awarded them as long as it doesn't affect or impact the male attention and male approval things like going to school but not too much having a domestic worker who does all the other work but doesn't interfere with your bedroom or your kitchen and they love to talk about how they wear their feminism as a coat and so in places where they exist without being chosen like the workplace they can advocate for the benefits of feminism especially within a capitalistic uh, standpoint or viewpoint but not in their house or in their home where their partners who have chosen them exist there they do not object to the functions of patriarchy they work with them one of the things that they believe in is slut shaming they believe that there's a value system that applies to all women and so the things that you do chip away at your value until you're valueless or you're just an empty gong and so sluts or prostitutes or sexually adventurous women challenge these ideas of theirs how can a woman be comfortable experiencing existing in a sexual capacity without caring for the future men her future husband they believe that they're more valuable especially if they didn't allow themselves to experience anything sexually or have sexual experiences before marriage they feel like puritanism is one of the best things to happen to them but they also believe in something which i find hilarious lady in the streets freak in the sheets basically you're supposed to be able to engage in all sorts of sexual gymnastics without ever having experienced any other sexual encounters apart from whatever your husband has given you and so they think you should reserve or preserve all of your sexual capacity for this man which is not particularly wrong especially for people who are monogamous asexual demisexual so many classifications of people who find sex to be much more valuable within relationships but they take it a step further they just believe that they're better than everyone and anyone else who makes decisions that are alternate to theirs deserves to be punished they actually believe that the violence and the terror inflicted upon people who are considered to be sexually promiscuous especially if they are women is justified so anything that is done towards against wars and not them is perfectly normal now one of the worst things i've witnessed with my own eyes when it comes to dating and just how pickneys approach dating is their ability to ask for so little whilst requiring so much Pygmies will never outrightly come out and list all the things they require from a romantic partner. Pygmies want to present themselves to be the least needy kind of woman. Those who will be perfectly fine having nothing to eat, being taken out on hiking camps, paying for half their meal or the entire meal, then going home to the husband's house where they will show themselves to be worthy wives, domesticated in their full right, get to sweep, spread his bed, washes clothes with their hands etc without requiring anything they think there's something completely off about women who require things from their partners women with lists they believe that they're the best kind of women because they don't require anything and they like to preach about how they require nothing and how they're so interested in building their men and of course if you then look at how the story ends it ends in tears and they experience so much loss because of this they end up being very bitter because of course you gain nothing when someone can exploit you for free whilst you feel like you're advertising yourself as a woman who's needless and who can be of great asset without actually transacting anything and so this presentation of themselves as a needless people who work for themselves who require nothing of their partners directly conflicts with this idea of sexually provocative needy women who are free enough to talk about how they want to be wooed how they expect roses how they expect all these kind of materialistic things when they're dating or courting someone and these things are not abnormal not all of us like roses etc but there's nothing wrong with having some kind of expectation for your romantic partner whether or not it is reciprocated or it is done these that's a bold-faced lie nobody in the history of the world moves around without expecting anything of their partner and i tend to see this on some forums that i exist on where women will come back four years later talking about how they're so shocked because their partner didn't get them anything does not take them out on dates which they expect 
but were not able to vocalize because of the image that they were trying to present of themselves. Now, the shifty part of Pickney's existence is one that I find to be very peculiar. How can you be a person who's not trustworthy because you're continuously changing like a chameleon to be whatever reflects the interests and the ideas men are pushing forward at that time? And so you find that in cases where, let's say, men begin to say they don't like women who wear makeup, you find that a lot of pygmies will be in the thread below showing their bare faces and talking about how they still feel beautiful without makeup and they think makeup is a bit excessive. They can't even consider the idea that makeup is being done as an expression of art, for comfort, for so many other things that satisfy the individual without actually seeking a third party's approval. For them, being seen by men, giving, being given men's approval and praised for having not worn makeup, not being like the other women who are excessive, is what's most important to them. And this makes them the worst friends to have if you're a fellow woman. And what's hilarious is even though they're such bad friends because they have no integrity, they're unreliable and continue to change and throw other women under the bus just for male approval, is that they themselves believe every other woman is wrong. Every other woman is the one who's stabbing them in the back, but not their unreliable behavior and their lack of integrity. Now, pygmies don't just exist single or unmarried. Pygmies can also be married. And there's a kind of violence that they also inflict on unmarried women that's very interesting to note. When pygmies are married, that becomes the central part of their identity. And it's okay for somebody to be happy with their relationship and to talk about it. But pygmies, like always, love to raise it a step further. They like to talk so much about how every other woman on earth is jealous of their position. They like to flaunt this position as a great asset. They like to start conversations like, is marriage an achievement? So that they can flaunt their marriage everywhere and talk about how wonderful their lives are. And it's not to say being married means you live a horrible life, but pygmies make that the central part of their identity. Once you take away the marriage, there's nothing left just because of how intertwined their entire being has become with being married. And they walk around with this paranoia and the belief that all the other single women like me are there to steal their men. Even lesbians are accused of hiding and laying in wait to steal their husbands. And they believe everyone is foolish, unwanted, and valueless simply because they've not been chosen. In fact, pygmies believe if a man has not married you, he does not value you. Or that marriage is the single most important way of showing value. Even when they're in abusive situations, they tend to stay because the only validating part of that experience is the marriage. And if somebody marries you, that means they value you. So whatever they do after that has to be the works of a third party, not that they're just a monster and you need to leave that relationship or that situation. And so it becomes a very difficult situation for those of us who try and rescue them from these terrible situations. Of course, they are horrible, but we don't want them hurt. So we will try to do certain things, but it's difficult to remove them from those situations when these, be when these beliefs are so deeply entrenched. And of course, when they're unmarried, they're very sad, sorrowful, and live in a constant state of longing. And that's why they engage in these behaviors in the first place so that they can be chosen or be validated by male attention. And what's annoying is these kind of women have no legitimate ambition outside of their men's wishes. So if the men have the ideas or the interest and the ambition to start something huge, they're perfectly fine doing some of the work behind the scenes and not building anything of their own or being actively involved in the business. They're okay leaving their jobs simply to satisfy whatever wishes their men have. And they exist in a helpers category. And they exist solely in a helpers category without any ambition or thought processes of their own. They exist in a perpetual state of mobility even if they were doing something that some of us would die to do, entering spaces and rooms that some of us would love to be in. They are willing to let everything go just so they can salvage and save this romantic relationship or whatever situation they have with their husbands and their partners. And I think this is one of, and this is one of the self-destructive behaviors I mentioned earlier. 
So there's so much that can be said about pygmies and their behaviors and how terrible it is. But unfortunately, it's difficult to compress all that information into one video. But I hope you get the gist. This is exactly who they are. They engage in much worse things, but we can't even fully capture just how dangerous they are as the foot soldiers of patriarchy. And yes, they are pygmies who do. And yes, they are pygmies who believe this term is derogatory and speaks ill of them. Of course, it does within its own rights a community you harm is within its rights when it labels you for being exactly that are you a person who lives solely to be picked yes why are you engaging in that behavior these are questions you could ask yourself and it doesn't mean that there's no way of reforming yourself if you are a pick me a lot of pygmies are now on the right side of history because of self-introspection and how they help themselves because of self-introspection, reading, and accepting new information. But when you're doing the work of the devil, nobody needs to like you. We do want you to reform though. Now, I'm always very empathetic towards pygmies, despite the harm they cause the movement and how much they derail the progress feminism aims to create. But, I mean, it must be incredibly difficult to unlearn all the information you've had fed to you and you've been groomed into from the time you were a little child but somehow i feel like when you're an adult like all of us had to do you can unlearn these harmful behaviors and choose to be on the right side of history i don't think that's too difficult especially in this day and age where we have the internet there are spaces where perhaps because of my own biases if i was to see a woman behave in a very pick me-esque way I would be more forgiving because I believe they've not had access to resources. But a person who has TikTok, Twitter, no, absolutely no way. Not those platforms where I know there are thousands of creators dedicating hours and hours of their days to creating information for all of us to learn. I cannot forgive that. And if you're on YouTube, best believe I'm not going to buy any of the things that you have to say. You have to be closed off and without information and seclude and or secluded for you to actually have some kind of ground or, uh, or leeway when it comes to being a pick me but that doesn't make you any less dangerous pick me's engage in the dirty work of patriarchy female genital mutilation slut shaming victim blaming are all terrible things that women are currently leading at you do not find majority of the men pushing forward female genital mutilation. In Zimbabwe, we practice level 4 female genital mutilation, which is labia elongation. You will not find lots of men pushing young children to engage in this self-mutilation. But most definitely women are doing these things. And that needs to stop. We have to make mention of it. We can't ignore it and move past it as if it's not a thing that's happening. And I hate that even though they're the ones pushing these regressive ideas, they believe that they're the actual feminists. They hate feminists because they find them too forward. They are not like them, the real feminists who are reasonable. And they associate reasonable behavior with the fight for voting rights, fight for women in workplaces, um maternity leave fights for young girls like memory who are child brides etc but what they don't understand and the height of their delusion is believing that these things were reasonable in the times that they were one they don't understand that unreasonable feminists are the reason why we have everything we have now and the unreasonable feminists of today are the ones who will give our children and our grandchildren the gifts and the freedoms of tomorrow that goes completely over their head they like to talk about education and all these rights that have been won already and turn them into their own personal victories which we know is inaccurate because we actually read history we know about women who set themselves on fire killed men poisoned their husbands and mush so what they call being a reasonable feminist is the same as being a redundant feminist basically doing none of the important work not moving anything forward and sometimes engaging debates about just how awful the position of the boy child is without actually knowing the input that feminist waves like the third and fourth wave which we are currently exist in have done with bettering society by taking an intersectional lens towards feminist politics and outside of their complete dismissal for real work that feminists do pick me the dangerous 
simply because they love to push harmful stereotypes love to slut shame love to do all these things that give patriarchy validity um i remember back in the day when i i was still very young at expressing myself as a feminist and pushing forward the ideas that i'm so confident speaking about today and one of uh, my ex-male mutuals then brought forward how other other women felt feminists were excessive and stupid and how that should have been enough because it wasn't even men derailing the progress of feminism that other women were in agreement with men and what i should have known then was that in every movement not everyone will be persuaded it's impossible to persuade everyone and even during the fight against the enslavement of human beings was happening there were still some of our very own ancestors fighting against those who were engaging in kind of violent protest or refusing to negotiate these basic rights who were ridiculed for pushing forward these ideas called excessive and some of our own even camped and laid in the same bed as our oppressors so there's nothing new about that so it's not surprising to find that even in the fourth wave of feminism we still have sellouts we still have women who are derailing the progress of feminism just so they can be picked and so that they can bask in the male gaze Whew, that was a mouthful i think i'm tired of speaking now so i guess this is where the video will end thank you so much for watching this video tell me what your thoughts are on pick meism do you think we can save them do you think we can savage them are these people who are able to repent or are they a lost cause I think they are lost cause mostly. I think they'll just die out and better people will come forward. <laughs> but that might be a bit extreme. So tell me your opinions in the comment section below. Leave a thumbs up and watch some of my videos, some of my other videos if you can, if you want to make me happy. And I'll see you in the next video.